Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome back to Dark Souls. So, last episode, I kind of foobarred the Undead Asylum a little bit, uh, fighting the boss. But we came out okay, and... I don't know. Uh, pretty, ple pretty pleased with drawing victory out of the Jaws of Defeat. Really just kind of like making up for my own mistakes, but still. Uh, I, I am proud of, proud of my ability to uh, be stupid and make up for being stupid at the exact same time. Let's see what we got. This guy... This part always screwed me up. It was like... I think of like one of my third... It was like my third death my first time through. I came over to kick this guy off just as the other guy hits me from behind. So I move into like kick and then proceed to kick and get hit at the same time to the point where I just immediately launched myself off the edge. Falling down and fighting this guy, who we're going down to in a second. It was very embarrassing. Anyway. Let's see. I want to... Ah. I, I, was, I was trying to, like, kick him, but it wasn't working. My snap kicks aren't nearly as effective as I thought they would be, but that's okay. I, I was kind of hoping to kick him off the edge. Not because I need to, from a strategic standpoint, but because it's silly. Anyway. So, as I was saying, like, the previous episode, I just like how much you can see, like, down there. I think that actually might even be the Valley of the Drakes. If you're looking at it, there's no way I'd ever make it there, but it's still cool. Uh, that bridge is, like, how you get to the Undead Parish. The ramparts are where the, the Tauros Demon are. It's just kind of this nice, cohesive environment that you can, you can see where you're going to go, and you can probably go there without too much issue. Uh, not to mention the fact that if you really want to, you can go to areas out of order, because, fuck it, why not? Not, uh, not going to be the case in this Let's Play, mainly because I am not nearly as confident of a Let's Player slash, like, Dark Souls player, so we're not doing really any kind of challenge. Uh, part of me was thinking in the back of my mind, oh, it would be kind of cool to do, like, a firebomb-only run, but I was thinking, yeah, that would be really expensive and probably would end in abject failure. And that's okay, because honestly, if I want to get into the like the serious challenge stuff, we'll do serious challenges when we hit Dark Souls 2. And I have more time, because fortunately Dark Souls 2 is coming out very shortly, and I would like to, if I could, uh, this might be a little insane, but if I could get like daily episodes out, I might actually be able to have a full Let's Play of this game by the time the second one comes out. And if not, then I'm going to cry, or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It'll be a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, that's for certain. Might actually have to, like, roll back on Tower of Guns. It's hard to say. I, I'll probably keep a lot of the, like, loot collection off-camera, because I can spend a lot more time off-camera doing things than, you know, on-camera doing things. Because, there, uh, for example, I've, I've got to do painting, shells around. It's one of those where I, I can grind on my own time, but I can't record on my own time at all times. I usually can pretty much, well, oh, dragon. I pretty much can only record during, like, the early parts of the day. And that's fine. But I'd, I'd very much like to record pretty much everything. So, I think as it stands, may, maybe in the interest of getting as many episodes out as possible, I'll try and get uh, two a day. At least for the earlier parts. We'll probably slow down once we've uh, found the Lord Vessel, especially. Really just Mo and Ornstein are going to be a little terrifying. I don't think I will be summoning any friends, but if I have to, I will, and I'll be slightly apologetic about it. Like, for example, Smo and Ornstein. Terrifying. I've never actually fought them solo, and there's a good reason why, and we will cover that when we get there. But especially for, like, these parts, pff, summoning people, eh. Not even, like, the Capra Demon scares me that much. The two gargoyles are a little pain in the assy for me, but I think that's largely because I play bad. I play impatiently. I'm a very impatient player, which, honestly, is, the, like, the worst way to play Dark Souls. Let's be serious here. But I like speed, I like efficiency, I like, you know, not going slow and doing things, you know, the methodical, safe way. I'd rather just, like, burst in, guns blazing, go out in a blaze of glory, that, that sort of deal. And, uh, that's not exactly conducive to good Dark Souls playing. <sighs> so, uh, another thing I probably have failed to mention. I'm going to put a couple points into dexterity just so I can use some extra weapons. But, um, 
I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but considering I'm not going to put like any weird caps on myself as far as leveling goes, I'm not too concerned with point allocation-ish. But, uh, so before this episode started, I went down into the graveyard and got myself the Zwiehander and the Winged, uh, Spear. It's like, on one hand, technically, I don't, I, technically I shouldn't, I should, like, film that, but at the same time, if you know Dark Souls, then you already know where that stuff is. And if you don't know Dark Souls, you probably don't care about loot collection, unless you're using this as some kind of weird tutorial. And let's be serious here, don't watch me as a tutorial person. I am too inane and too chatterboxy to be truly informative, even though I do tend to uh, be a little informative in my Let's Plays. Uh, just because I'm kind of a didactic person. Uh, for a while, uh, especially when I was in high school, I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to go to college for art. I like art. I'm good at it. And then I'm going to be an art teacher. Well, that didn't work. Oh, this is a bad situation to be in. Surprise! Uh, so, yeah, I, w I wanted to be an art teacher for, like, the longest time. And I actually got an award from high school for, like, you know, best prospective art teacher. And we actually had, like, ten people that wanted to be art teachers in my high school. For whatever reason. And, uh, now the way the cookie has crumbled, I'm kind of working my way up to being an indie game artist slash, like, concept artist for video games. Uh, funny th how things change, but at the same time, being a teacher is hard in a way that I don't want to, like, deal with. A.K.A. I really don't want to deal with little shits, uh, you know, skipping class, not doing homework, whatever. Because, honestly... Uh, especially, like, a high school art teacher, which is kind of what I was considering, as stupid as that is. Uh, oh, forgot about this guy for a second. I don't even know why there's, like, even a chamber here, apart from, like, oh, hey, you can see the stairs. But, uh, so I was considering being a high school art teacher, but most high schools just require art as a, like, you know, you need to have some kind of art to, like, pad out your classes, your, your curriculum, mainly to enrich your life. Might take some damage here. Nope, did not. Okay, well, back off. And, uh, so, especially in the, like, the lower level art classes, there were a shit ton of kids that just did not give a damn. And to me, who gives a damn about pretty much everything he does, it's like, you know, wander goes 100% or nothing. And I'm gonna get firebombed here. Hopefully I don't get more than that. Nope. Uh, oh, dear. Well, we didn't die. That's good. Uh, we almost died. That's... I mean, we didn't die. Yay. Uh, I, I think I'm going to run a death counter in this game. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. I'll try and keep it up. I've got a notepad in front of me, and I'm going to try and record as many as possible. But if it starts getting ridiculous, the count might go off slightly. I hate these guys. I hate firebombs. But yeah, so I wanted to be a high school art teacher... But in retrospect, it would be a giant pain in the ass, considering I'd have to more or less baby pit, uh, baby pit, babysit a bunch of kids. And let's be honest here. Like, college students, you can kind of use the threat of failing a class to, you know, have some sway over them. But high schoolers, well, they fail a class, their parents are going to come in and just kind of, like, hate on you and be angry and, you know, yell at you for being a terrible teacher. Or, I mean, hell... High school teachers, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of shitty ones, let's be serious here. But some of them just get, like, a really bad hand. Um, I, I'm thinking of a couple of horror stories, and I mean, admittedly, this is from the internet, so it's kind of hard to uh, exactly corroborate the story. I, th I think that's the right word, but it's like, I've heard of teachers, especially in bad school districts or, like, weird school districts where kids will say, you know, they... Uh, you know, did something inappropriate. We had to deal with something like that in my school where one girl completely erroneously was saying that the teacher was harassing her in class and uh, pretty much nobody else backed her up on it because we were there, nothing was happening, dude was way too passive for it. But I, I have heard of, you know, teachers actually getting away with shit that they shouldn't, but usually they get caught, I don't know, we, we had uh, the middle school principal's son get arrested for that sort of thing. So it's kind of like, both good teachers and bad teachers, but it's just kind of the environment I don't want to be in. And so instead of, you know, being around kind of that toxic situation, I, I guess I'm going into a field that is known for its uh, rampant sexism and harassment as well. Not so much within the industry, but like 
gaming conventions definitely have a lot of issues with uh, gender dis well not gender disparity gender treatment uh, but you know at, at this point I'm starting to get into kind of like overly hot topics that I'd rather not get into maybe on like a podcast but let's be honest here this is Dark Souls you guys want to see me hitting stuff let's talk about Dark Souls so there's a black knight down there <laughs> I'm not going for him he uh He's going to kill me if I try. Uh, so I'll probably come back for the Black Knights when I'm a little bit tougher and have a good weapon for fighting him in close quarters because as it stands, like this guy here, eh, he's pretty easy. If I really wanted to, I could probably kick him off the uh, little lip there, but eh, what's the need? Uh, first time I ever fought him, did I, I saw the barrel. I'm like, that's probably going to come rolling down and hit me. And I walked up to it, put up my shield to block and got immediately run over. It was kind of embarrassing. But that's okay. And is the... Nope, nope, it's not here. Okay, there's the, like, Titanite Gecko. It's got to be on the second floor. But first time I ever found that one, I was like, what is this thing? And then it ran away from me, and I'm like, no, I'm too slow and fat to catch up to you. But this one's going down. This one's going down fast. Yeah, dead. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought we'd have to go on some kind of wild goose chase, and maybe I'd have to, like, go into post-editing and, you know, give us some yakety sacks or something like that. But... Didn't have to deal with it at all, which super convenient. I am one pretty raisin man. So now we've got the door to the Taurus demon, and he is a bit of a scary customer. So uh, I'm probably going to do a little bit of grinding, probably go get the rest of the treasure. Uh, maybe. Maybe maybe I'll give it a shot. Either way, I will see you guys on the next episode of Dark Souls. And we're going to go take on the Taurus demon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys then.